Nation Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with my very good friends, Jose Noya, Ryan Boniface. How are we this week, guys? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. How are you, Lee? I'm great, Joe. Great. Thank you for asking. Thank you, of course, everyone out there listening, watching, downloading, however you're taking this in. Of course, you can be watching live on TikTok right now. Just follow Joe, Jose Noya. Was it J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation? Yeah. Well there we go. It didn't have it on the screen that time. It threw me. And you can see us live on TikTok as well as Joe every day. And of course, follow us on social media at Listen to I N, Listen T O I N, YouTube, podcast players, all that jazz. You know where we are. Leave us reviews, etc., etc. Right. For the talking stick of conversation this yeah. week, <laughs> got a laugh out of Joe there. Who is up for the subject this week, guys? The man that loves the baton, you should know who it is. I should, but I like to build this intrigue during the show. Okay. Oh, well, who do we think it is then? I don't know. Who's I'm going to take a guess that it's Ryan. It is. It is me. Yeah. What have you got for us, Griffster? Uh, what I've got for us is... Um, it's not a question. It's more of a statement, and I want to know what kind of what your guys is... Um, bounce back or your thoughts on it ideally um but why do we think oh no, no, no. how am i going to phrase it a question when you start how am i going to phrase it yeah well, how am i going to phrase it <laughs> i find that i am the busier i am the happier i am to an extent i don't want to say i'm not going to push that boat too far but the the more i have on my um in my stratosphere of things to get done because we don't like to do lists on this podcast um the happier i am generally speaking um now my understanding of of this is that i've always um liked boxing things off i've always liked ticking things off getting something you know getting things off of my to-do list and onto my completed list and things like that um so that's my main reason but do you guys feel this way do you know where your limit is and if you do feel this way why do you think that is a lot of questions off the back of your statement i was going to ask you a question back which you pretty much answered there anyway i was going to say is it having lots of stuff on your plate that you worded far more eloquently than i did there or is it the feeling of having done X number of things off of your plate that makes you feel good. I like being wanted or relied on is the wrong word, but I like being, um, I like being needed. I, yeah. That, that's, I think that's it. So I, like, just, I like just to be clear, Ryan, so that you know this for future reference, Here it comes. I neither want nor need you. There it is. So, <laughs> That's a lie, and I know that's a lie, so that's okay. <laughs> whatever, whatever helps you sleep better at night. But um, I, I, I like to be wanted, and I like to be needed for for stuff, as I say. And it's and it's nice to be able to do stuff and come back and say, "Look, you gave me this task. I've taken that. I've I've grown it into what you wanted." But a lot of the time, I've also painted it blue which is your favorite color and added wings to it so it works even better than how you thought it would and that's always something that i think i've been good at but like you give me a base idea and i'll create that and then supersede it and make it a lot better than that I'm not necessarily saying anything i make is perfect but you give me a you give me an idea for us for a, an initial stage and i'll give you that initial stage and then give you the first prototype and things like that and i've all i always like doing that i always like passing expectations and um kind of pushing things forward and that might be down to my ego and kind of um feeling good about myself and all that kind of stuff but i think having something that someone says you know what that's that's great that's that's great work which is stuff you say to me all the time just to rebut all your i neither want nor need you <laughs> um is is you know the thing that kind of is one of the main drivers for getting me through 
through my day and we've done we've done conversations on the 16 personality types and things like that before which i'm going to say is nearly two years ago i seem to remember that being in like our 80th episode and we're coming up to I'm like our 180th while episode while you carry um, on reference it. and so we, you know my love language which isn't a, a big masculine thing i accept but my love language is like giving gifts and things like that and doing things and and kind of um offering stuff away and, and that kind of thing so i've always been and i like to say at christmas and, and birthdays and things like that i you know you, you don't give to receive but i don't receive to give like i like to give more than i ever get in um and that's just kind of i think the person that i am i think it just kind of gives me that validation um but yes do you do you guys have similar similar feelings do you prefer i know everyone would like to have an empty to-do list we're going to call it a to-do list now but i know everyone would like to have an empty to-do list um because that means your life would be easy but i also don't cower away from a, a larger to-do list i might procrastinate if that to-do list is difficult or challenging but i won't i won't back off of it you know i'll i'll, I'll front it up and do what i can I'll say, we'll come to you in a second, Joe. I'll say quickly so I don't lose sight on it, is I have the aspiration, the thing that drives me with a with a you know a list of activities, something I know I need to do. I mean, I showed you guys earlier the first step I've taken in about 100 in doing a big decoration thing in the house here. And getting that list complete and getting to the end and knowing what it'll look like is what drives me to get it done. But I don't think I ever want an empty list. I'd be like, oh, what? what now and it's, it's that funny kind of competing thing but joe on the whole um you know lots to do against not much to do and happiness where do you where do you sit on that oh my god i've written down so much <laughs> there's so much on this you said and the ticking off the list thing there is a something that goes off in the brain when we tick something off we do it and think oh that was good it's a, yeah, a little bit of a dopamine rush and that's the addictiveness thing that the brain gives us when we do tick things off lists and that's why that's to do this I really... up on fortnite yeah, it's all about your Not dopamine. Not been invited levels. for about six months. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, so that's why to-do lists. <laughs> Here you go. The son and dad are, uh, are having a convo. I love it. And uh, But yeah, so it's, it is something that works. Um, and the thing is about being busy. Again, we talk about the busyness, don't we? You know, um, I think it depends on what you're doing, um, of course. And, what, and, and you, you raise another thing about you like, to be needed or wanted and there's a big thing that human beings do like to have and that's significance like you need to feel that you're wanted and needed and also part of that bigger social belonging because if you feel needed you feel part of a group um and that you do that and also there's a guy called um there's a few things that come to mind um herzberg's hygiene theory of motivation talks about recognition so when you're your life's in pretty much okay order then things like recognition help you become more motivated so that feels like it's a motivator for you as well um, and also when you said you like doing things your your love language is just doing things um, it's about giving not receiving um simon scoops are very much of your or when your are he's a multimillionaire. we talked about him before we had an interview on the podcast with him he always goes on about give without take because actually you know if you give without take is actually it does give you again um gives you good feelings doesn't it when you can give without actually wanting anything in return you're doing it i did this and it's you know it's one of those things so the one thing that struck me with this conversation is you know when people say i want to go for the retirement and they stop and if you don't have anything to like do then what do you do right and usually people decline when they retire i've, I've heard of lots of people when they retire they they don't last very long because they don't have anything in there that's going to keep them going so i'm you know not that i'm retiring soon but i'm starting to think oh, okay as my huh Fairly What's soon. That? <laughs> i'd like to retire. hopefully i can um but will i retire not really because i'll probably st still do in this there'll be a different type of thing i'll have things in my day that will mean lots of different things so i'm wanting to find things that are more meaningful so to answer your question ryan do I want lots of things to do? Yes, I do, but I want them to be meaningful. I don't want just to do things to doing things. I don't just want to list. Um, I want to start doing things that feed into the things that fill me up, inspire like like into probably things that you do. Um, so that's why I'm shaping my life around that. So the training, the coaching, this you know the, the content. Actually, the content and stuff is such a great thing. Um, 
so yes i do but i I wouldn't like anything in there but i know you do get them that doesn't feed into that inner core of what i'm doing i'm trying to shape my life so i get those inner core things so i don't get overrun by just stuff and people giving me stuff and then i'm overrun with the stuff and i'm not really i'm not it's not really moving me moving the needle to where i want to be so what i'm very keen about is time because we can't get time back so we've got to be very careful about to-do lists and what it is on that list and is it something that we want to do or need to do or is it something that you know is going to be something that's going to be you know move towards what we want and develop really so yes i think they're a great thing and i think you should have because you know you need things in your life to do like well, humans are designed to work so humans are designed to be doing things it's just the type of things I think that I'm my view on it is just doing type of things that are feeding into the thing that you want to do. And you don't always do things we want to do, but there are going to be things that aren't, but we should be shaping that list, I think. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. Over to you Good guys. Thoughts there, Joe. Good thoughts. I'm the same run. I, I think, well, I touched on it a bit there, by the way, episode 65, 64 and 65 were our episodes on the 16 personalities. Maybe. So over two years ago. From, wow! Yeah, June the third and June the eighth, twenty twenty. Then should we be doing it again? Maybe. Maybe we should. Yeah, that's followed by for people who want to dive back in the archives episodes. We then went on to the personal values sixty six and sixty seven, and where is it? It's not long after that. There was one. There was a. There was about a month period where we did like ten episodes <laughs> on the same subject. So twenty five <laughs> rules to live by. No, twenty five rules to yeah twenty five rules to live by which we did from set the 29th of September until the 10th of November. Is that is that four episodes? Is that six. four weeks? No, That's six. No, 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 seven. Seven. Seven episodes. Seven. seven. They are all gold. They're Listen fantastic. They're fantastic. But it, They're brilliant. Uh, brilliant. They are rules. Go and check them out. They're really good, actually. Robin Sharma, right? Remember? Indeed. We probably so, could have got it into one episode, though, if we really true. tried. That is true. I don't think so. Not with the amount rate that I talk. No, absolutely well, not. That's, that's true. That was Speaking back when which... we were doing like 45 minute episodes as well. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Was yeah, it right, I reckon so. I reckon so. Joking. Wow. Right. As we go down reminiscing lane. No, I'm the same, Brian, with you. I like, I, I'm not, it's not so much having the fullness, like you said, but there's a definite feeling when you get to the end of the day. And you know you've achieved something, whether that's something physically or, you know, mentally on a computer, whatever it is, something you've done that's moved something forward and you feel good about it and you feel you achieve something is definitely a better feeling than one when you haven't done everything. Like everything in life, there's a balance. Sometimes you need days where you don't do anything because you risk burning yourself out. And it's a balance between all those things. But I definitely like to stuff too, because I find as well, if I haven't got much to do, I'll slow down. So if I've got two jobs, whatever they are on my list for the day, I'll take 40% of the day to do them, making this up. If I've got 10 lists, I'll probably get those two things done in half, if not a quarter of the time, because you you pace it all out. And I know, Joe, there's a there's a, a word for this. So I definitely... You looked am... in my eyes, did you? You picked yeah, it up. Yeah, there, yeah. there is, I can't remember what it was. I was trying and to remember. I, we did it in the I podcast. Never, yeah, I can never remember what it's called. But I... So it definitely, it definitely motivates me. And there's definitely that feeling of having got stuff done. The bit... I was going to mention this, the bit where I struggle, and I don't know if you guys have this, and I have to check myself on this, is when things become routine, I kind of dismiss them off. So yeah. as an example, I've talked about this, the, my morning routine. Joe, I know you love it every time I mention the morning routine, but I have kind of, there's two hours before I, I start working, and one is doing all the house house stuff that I need to do to get everything ready for the day. And then there's another hour that I'll allot for different jobs and stuff. Um, or I might sometimes knock on for early work in that time, whatever it is, and then I go into my day. And what will happen is during that first couple of hours of the day, I will use um say say in a week, I really make really good use of that for three days, and for two days I don't. I don't come out of the week thinking, oh, I did things three days there, I achieved something. I kick myself for wasting the two days and almost dismiss the three that I did something on. And I have to kind of check myself sometimes on that. And especially with the first, you know, normal day-to-day stuff. But, you know, you get all the washing up done, done three loads of washing, even gone and weeded the garden, something like that. 
I almost check them off my list because they're not new and shiny. And I think I do myself a dis not mentioning then working for seven, eight, nine hours and whatever it is and everything else like that. I kind of, all of that just becomes, well, that's what I do. What else have I done? And I, I think I run the risk of almost burning myself out or not mentally giving myself enough credit sometimes. I'm not saying that I'm brilliant. I do loads every day, but you know, that, that can take me through from half six, seven in the morning depending on what time I finish work, sometimes till seven or eight in the evening and come off of it almost feeling like I've done nothing when actually I've probably done loads if I wrote it all down. And I don't know how you, you deal with that because it is that almost going back and checking that list of what's been achieved type of thing. Yeah. I remember us talking as a group that we much prefer um, have done lists rather than to-do lists um, because of that dopamine hit and the... Um just the satisfaction of actually getting of, of having stuff done um so yeah no I, it's good that you guys kind of share um somewhat of, a, of an opinion on that and, and i'd like to think that most people um probably feel um more successful or, or, or better about themselves if they have more things to do um and it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're the opposite to that that you have the wrong attitude about it because that's not the case at all. Um, but I, you know, everyone everyone works differently in that aspect. So I think it's just what what uh, we say it all the time. But what just making sure what works for you works for you. Um, that's the uh, that's the most important part, I think. Um, but as a what was I going to ask? There was a, there was a follow up I was going to ask as a kind of trade off for that. Do you think if you'd always been uh, less busy than what you had been, your opinion would differ on that? So do you think if 16-year-old Lee was faced with a to-do list that he has today, he would approach it in the same way? Same with you, Joe. Because I don't. I think it's a 16... question. I agree with you. I don't think so. I think I've built up my resilience, broadness of the shoulders, however you want to call it. And then I think once you've got that capacity... It's easy, even if you do less and you build it up again, it's easy to maintain it. But I think it's been built over the years. I think 16 year old Lee would have a heart attack if I said what I'd done today, for example. Yeah. I think I think if you look at if you look at when you start a brand new job, you know, you're given a base task or list of tasks you have to do by a certain point. You know, by the end of month one, that that list may have doubled. It might have stayed the same to make sure that you're in bed properly and that you're happy, but that that this might have doubled because you picked up in the first 20, 25 working days how to do that stuff pretty well. But now you're given something else to do. And then that that doubles or it, it, it expands exponentially as time kind of goes. And eventually you're not doing these tasks. You've shown somebody else how to do these tasks, but then you've picked up other tasks that you weren't doing before. And this bubble of of time of 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 tasks filled in time expands and expands and doesn't necessarily explode but you come there comes a point where perhaps and i think everyone that's perhaps working worked in lower or middle management will probably feel in a similar way to this where where it you feel that you couldn't do all of the stuff that you that you've been given to do in a day you couldn't physically do that all in a day so you have to not necessarily cut corners but find ways to perhaps box two of those things off at once or you just become smarter in the way that you that you address um the tasks that you've got you become you, you find a way around it to to make sure that you can get there and 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 that becomes um that becomes a challenge in itself and it's all about self-development and self-improvement and all of that kind of stuff and I think once you reach that point and you've got a to-do list of you know, 15 things in a day, we'll say, but you can box off five of them by doing two things, then you're going to go perfect. That's a third of my stuff done in, in a third of the day. I feel great. Um, and that's that's where it gives you, and me personally, it gives me the motivation to crack on. If I have a to-do list and I can and I can tick off four things on it pretty quickly, you know, I'm... I'm making, I'm riding the bike downhill. Like I'm only building momentum here. So everything's coming up Millhouse. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's okay to accept as well. I think that 
there will be some days where you don't box anything off of your to-do list and you know you might feel pretty crap about that but as long as you've moved things forward anywhere from where they were the previous day then that could be a win as well um there'll be some days and i remember that lee and i've had these conversations before there'll be some days where whatever you touch just breaks um whatever you address just goes wrong whatever you set up doesn't work and that's you know that's also part of life not everything's a success um and i think sometimes life builds up those unsuccessful moments all at the same time just to um just to ruin your wednesday or whatever day of the week it is <laughs> you know no i like that and it just reminded me of that whole thing of um because you know, i'm kind of this doing this coaching with leaders or i was the uh the lead coach and uh that thing about tasks and at a brilliant coaching. I think I've talked about it before, actually the Kobe time matrix. I don't know if you in the seven it's in the book called um, seven habits of highly effective people. Um, and so you can, those tasks that we do, we can filter them into urgent, important, urgent, not important, urgent, uh, not important, not urgent. And you can filter the tasks. It's a brilliant matrix. If you just search for it online, it's fantastic. And, you know, every, you know, everyone gets stuff on their plate and using that matrix, actually, a lot of the time, the stuff that comes on your plate, you can plan to do them rather than putting everything in the urgent box, which gets people stressed. And this is what I used to do. So going back to, you said about the early days, when I was a lead in the early days, I was going to get everything done, but it's impossible to get really stressed. So it was important that, you know, you plan a lot of things. So not everything is urgent and important. You have to do it now. It's like a lot of it's about planning. And so it's a great planner anyway. So I think that's the thing that I learned um le- early on to, to plan um the thing that was missing so you know having those tools are you know so important um but anyway just want to give a quick uh, shout out to uh follow jarvis and baju baju i think following um uh, joining the, the journey for ten thousand followers just gonna uh just gonna give a shout out thanks for that appreciate it there you go i will see you guys that's my little penny on that but yeah there's a there's a lot in that um so the t- if you want to know what it is uh, type into Google, Kobe Time Matrix, you'll get it up. And it's a really good tool to to get your task into a, into the right place um, so you don't end up trying to do everything at once. I think that's a good thought, Joe, a very good thought. Speaking of tasks, one that's on my list every week is to do our shameless plugs. So I will say, everyone listening wants to support us, likes what they're hearing, enjoys their weekly dose of inspiration, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk details of the coaching service on there sign up for joe's newsletter archive of the shows you can go back and hear those wonderful and not at all tripe shows that we were talking about earlier and of course get your inspiration nation merchandise show your love for the podcast mugs t-shirts hats socks face masks as joe has here as well it is all over at inspirationnation.org.uk and of course, social media at listen to I N, listen T O I N, and just put Jose Neuer Inspiration Nation into your Google machine and you'll get Joe on every platform that's ever existed from Bebo to TikTok. Not Bebo, not MySpace. They're, they're no longer around. Or what's the other one that was around? That other TikTok y one, it was a Vine. Vine, you said... Vine, Vine was, Vine was the it. best of all time. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah. current, Joe is there. TikTok is the favourite for him right now. Jay Neuer yeah. underscore Inspiration Nation, Journey to 10,000. Again, you can catch us live doing the podcast if you're listening to this now. Tuesday, we're technically on a Wednesday now, technically because it is Wednesday, but normally on a Tuesday, Joe will sign post on the going live and you can watch us live, interact with the show, etc. etc. I saw just now someone with the name of I Have an Itchy Big Toe joined us, which I think yeah, is a fantastic yeah, I handle. <laughs> I love that one, so... We appreciate all the support from everyone that joins and listens. Right, Ryan, any more inspirational thoughts on the benefits of being productive? Not from me. Jose? No, I just think that's it. I think that book, and I think it will be really helpful just to not get overwhelmed, I think, because you can do. But I really like this because of the whole ticking off of things. We can get, you know, we can tick off things that may not be that important, right? But it still gives you the rush. You might still get, you think you're getting somewhere, you maybe not. All right. So, yeah, I think it's really important. A really good topic, uh, Ryan, because I think people not only in work, but in like life, like you said, we don't usually give credit for things we do and being really, really, what's the word? Conscious of what we do and actually recognizing 
like Lee said, because it's not nice and shiny, I'm not giving myself my credit for that. And actually, those are the things that get you to where you still are. So, yeah, it's a lot. I'm guilty of that. Actually, that's another thing that you know you you, you tick things off, which um, you just think, oh, it's just what I do. But recognizing it, because you tend to think I didn't do anything, but you did do things. It's really weird. Yeah, you sort of sort of blank it out. It's a really good. Uh, I really like that, by the way. And pacing me... it out, it's like that balance. You can do, mm. you know, you can pace too much and you do nothing, but also, you know, progress is progress. And that is a joke. I think it's what people give us credit for it. But I as well, Ryan, I firmly sit in that club that I do prefer to have more rather than less on my list. It does motivate me, options to feel good. And like you do sometimes, you can pick off some of those quick wins, shall we say, that give you that motivation to spur you on as well. Whatever that is. That's great. Okay. Little and often, that's how to be productive. Little and often. Like it. Like it. Fantastic, guys. No, that's a, I like that, Ryan. Thank you for that. Right. It's been a while since we did them. What are our takeaways before I count us down? Takeaways. Yep. Go on in. Do you want to go first? first or do you want to... <laughs> I'm sure you panic into action there, Joe. No, I'm just tidying over the, pay, the page. Mine, mine is, and I know that's what I said on it, but it's Ryan really helped reinforce it in my mind because I am someone who feels good because of that have done things is to make sure you give yourself credit for the things that you've done. Yeah, I, I, I like that one too. I'm going to nick. I'm going to nick. I'm going to. I'm going to nick what you've just said. Little and often. Okay. Little and often. And my takeaway really is to is to use that matrix more because I haven't used it for a while. I bit, when I was doing a lot of coaching, I was using that tool um and you know it's about using those things so you know at the minute i'm on vacation or holiday um so i'm just really just taking a, a step back so maybe i should really when i feel a bit overwhelmed is using that more which i still you know i still haven't got that as a routine so that's my takeaway but i really like the thing about what you said a bit earlier as well about the recognizing what we've done so yeah because that's a lot of things that we don't do we just feel it as part of course so a couple of things really that are really i think really important from this podcast um that you've both raised so yeah so i think people will find this a very useful if they listen to the whole episode so do it good conversation thank you guys thank you ryan in particular topic. thank you everyone supporting the podcast wherever you are whatever you're doing um podcast player or youtube if you could leave a review hit subscribe hit the five star button we appreciate all of that that's what helps us grow um and we will be back again next week wherever you are whether that's on your podcast platform if it's on youtube subscribe and we'll be notified when it's out or look for us on tiktok six ish on a tuesday gmt follow joe j noia underscore inspiration nation and you'll see when that all is i think all that's left for me to do is count us down you go for it, Lee. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys, Catch you guys, guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.